Welcome to Transmissions. Most of you must be on a path of truth. Many of you are seeking truth. The spiritual quest is about knowing the truth. Unfortunately, if you take a look at uh, the current situation, most of the time we are told what is true. But we are never told how it is true. Most of the seekers, they simply assume that if a guru is saying that something is true, then it has to be true and they kind of blindly assume the truth of it. This is no better than the blind faith. The truth cannot be told and yet everybody is trying to tell the truth and everybody seems to know what is true, what is false. If you are in the pursuit of truth, then it will become very necessary to know what is true, what is not. And it will become very necessary to be certain of what you know. So today we are going to take a look at the truth and how to know if what I know is really true or not. In other words, how to know the truth, how to be sure of it. And the second question, which is also very important, is that why do we need to know the truth? Why is it so important? When we are presented with a statement or an experience, we tend to classify it into true or false. And we do it Mostly because we need to take an action. And we take an action on that which we classify as true. So you can see immediately that truth is a classification of statements. A statement can be true or false. If it is both true and false at the same time, then it is a kind of meaningless statement. If it is not true and not false, then it is indeterminate. You cannot really take an action on such statements. So the classification is very hard. We need to draw a very certain line between the true and false. We cannot have the gray area. It has to be black and white. And only then, we are certain that we can take an action on this statement. If the fruits of the actions, if the consequences of these actions, they turn out as desired, then our confidence in the truth grows. We tend to take those actions again and again. On the other hand, if our experience turns out to be undesired when it is not as expected, then we doubt the validity of the statement. Then we doubt the truth of the statement and we we'll look for other means to categorize the statement. So immediately we get a get definition of uh, truth. It is a categorization of statements. There are two categories, true and not true. They are mutually exclusive and we need to classify the statements or experiences 
because there is a need to take an action. Usually, your need is related to survival, nothing else but survival, most of the time. So we can guess that uh, the need to know the truth evolved due to the struggle for existence, that is, need to survive, and that forced our minds to evolve a strategy to find an optimal action which fulfilled our needs and we call those experiences and those statements as true statements. So this is the definition, this is my definition. I am very sure that uh, you will find at least 20 more definitions of the truth. But uh, I have done a little bit of research and it looks like they are all circular. They try to define the truth in terms of something which is true and false. It is not possible to do that. We should not do that. Our survival depends on true statements and that's why we need these, these kind of classifications. It has become our basic human nature to know the truth. If we need to take an action, we need to classify the experience as truth. And the question arises, how to classify the statements? Classification is like discrimination, trying to find what goes where and we try to find it using some criteria. We, we cannot classify an experience or a statement if we do not have any criteria to classify. How are we going to classify? Based on what? And therefore we need some criteria. So we can add this insight into our definition that truth is a classification of statements based on some criteria. Now you can guess that if I change the criteria, the truth or falsity of those statements can be changed simply by changing the criteria. Although we do not pay attention to these things. Only a seeker does because his need to know the truth is very intense. It is not like ordinary people. We want to know the truth and we want to be certain of the truth. Some people use very commonsensical criteria to classify the statements such as if I can see it, if I if I can hear it, if I can touch it, then that thing exists, it is true. If I cannot use my senses to verify that it exists, it is not true mostly. It is either imaginary or just a concept of some kind. There is no way for me to verify, to find an evidence, a proof of its truth. If, it, if I cannot see it, if I cannot grasp it in any way, I cannot perceive it in any way, then probably it is not true. This you can easily relate to the basic survival. Because an organism needs to see, an organism needs to hear and only then the organism takes an action. So this criteria is directly related to survival and is being used by the so-called materialistic people. If they can touch something, if they can see something, if they can measure something, then it becomes true for them, otherwise not. So it 
it is a direct consequence of our survival instincts it is not possible to directly perceive many things instantly for example if somebody says that go to this direction turn left and you will reach the city that you are going to you cannot see the city but you kind of trust that advice and then go find if the left turn takes you to the city or not so many people out of their trust for other people members of their own species of their own kind have accepted people as the criteria for classifying the experiences so if somebody says that this is true this is not true we tend to believe them especially if it relates to survival if somebody says do not eat this kind of fruit it is poisonous our immediate instinct is to trust that person oh it can be poisonous it can cause pain or it can cause death so we are we have this tendency to trust people especially on the matters of survival and if many people say the same thing look this is true and many people are saying it then almost automatically we assume that it is true and the reason is our herd mentality we are social animals and our survival depends on other people group of people if many people are running from something then i better run i need not sit there to experience the truth of it it can cause me it can cost me my life so there is another tendency in humans that if everybody is saying something is true we tend to believe it blindly many people are saying it it has to be true then we have certain special people for example our parents our family our friends and we trust them more because most of the time their statements were true that is what helped the child to survive because he followed his parents he followed his family members and so very instinctively we assume whatever is being said by these special people our relatives if they say something is true we tend to assume it as truth we classify it as truth we do not investigate further other than that people trust authorities people who are high up on the social ladder people who are highly educated so called experts or professionals or people who are considered as the leaders of the herd group leaders your social leaders leaders of your country leaders of your religion or caste or community you tend to trust them even if you don't trust them you simply assume that whatever they are saying is true the prime minister or president says something on the tv and it becomes uh, written in stone it is so true for you because so many people are saying yes it is true your leader is saying it is true the enemy country is attacking us i need your blood to defend the country i need your gold to produce more bombs and people rush to obey the leader this has again survival benefits because we evolved in societies we evolved in groups herds and the group leader the alpha male ensured our survival so whatever he says we blindly believe it it is true because helps in survival when the society it developed a little bit we became so called civilized we started trusting things like books media internet 
Nobody will say something false on the camera. Nobody is going to write something false in a book, isn't it? I don't know if we can connect this to survival, but it is indirectly connected to our trust on people. The written word has power. If I say something with my mouth, nobody is going to trust me. If I write it down on a paper and sign on it, and that has some weight. So if I publish a book, it, uh, it has more weight because why will I do such a stupid thing? Why will I write something false in the book? <laughs> so people trust books, especially the books which everybody is saying says truth. That is the, their only criteria. Similarly, something if it is written in uh, newspapers or written by somebody who is an expert, an authority, such as a scientist, a big scientist, a big doctor, something like that, it has to be true. And uh, there are some cunning people who would take advantage of them, uh, advantage of this tendency of people to believe the authorities or the media and they will show a man in white coat selling a toothpaste on your TV. Buy this toothpaste. It is proven to kill the bacteria and so on. And you rush to buy the thing. <laughs> you pay the money. You don't know what it does. But because it is a man in white coat, he is speaking English, you know, looks educated looks from a good family and he is on the TV. So why will he say something which is a lie? Why will he say something which is false? This is your criteria <laughs> to classify the statements. And an average person is born in this kind of criteria and dies utilizing these criteria. And usually, they serve them well. It is, you know, totally survival related. There is nothing hard and fast here. So, people don't pay attention to whether something is true or not as long as they are surviving nicely. If I say that there is water on Mars, Probably you're not concerned. You need water in your kitchen and bathroom. <laughs> you, don't, you don't worry about the truth of water on Mars. Yes, somebody who wants to go to Mars and then he needs to verify. He needs to find out if there is really water there or not. So the need for survival determines whether we worry about the truths or not. Whether if they are of any concern for us or not. So an ordinary person is not really troubled too much by what is true and what is false. Most of the time, their whole lives, 90% of their lives, they are mostly shrouded by lies, by false things. That is unfortunate because of the criteria that they have chosen to classify the truths classify the statements into true and false. Some people are smarter, they have more intelligence and they do not really trust the books or their senses. Because senses, they lie. They are not telling you what is out there. They are evolved to show you what is beneficial for survival, what is not. Who is a mate? Who is a predator? <laughs> that's all. That's all to show you. If something is good for your health, it smells good. If something is bad for your health, it smells bad. So, some people have grown a little bit and they have discovered more reliable ways of classifying the statements. For example, experimentation. You need to experiment many, many times 
and if most of the time the results are as desired as expected, then you say, okay, it is true now. And if they are unexpected or they are kind of fuzzy, they do not fall nicely into these two categories, then we say, I don't know. <laughs> you are not certain, you are not sure about the truth of those experiences, phenomena or statements. For experimentation, we need direct experience. We cannot rely on books or other people. And we also need logic. By logic, I mean simple laws, such as the statement cannot be both true and false, just like I said, or it cannot be true sometimes and false sometimes. It cannot be true in one place and false in other place. So these kind of logical criteria were developed. We also call this a scientific method of experimentation, empirical method, where we do experience, we do look for people and their opinions, but we do not trust we have very hard criteria and only then we classify it. This is the scientific method and it has produced tremendous amount of benefit for humans. If a medicine is curing a disease most of the time, then we say it is true that this medicine will cure this disease for somebody else also. This works for a lot of things. For example, you throw a stone and you can predict that it will fall down and you can also calculate where it will fall exactly. And that is useful for bombing people, firing bullets and... <laughs> it has helped in survival. Science is survival. Physical sciences. Similarly, the medical sciences, they are also concerned with survival. But there is a little bit of fuzziness there. If a medicine works for uh, many people, we simply assume that yes, probably this person has this kind of disease and this kind of medicine will work. So the job of a doctor is uh, kind of more difficult than that of a physicist or an engineer. Because sometimes the diagnosis is wrong, sometimes the medicines don't work. Sometimes very odd things happen and the logic fails. So it is mostly a hit and trial situation. And the doctor then, and the doctor will simply change the criteria and will try to find the real cause or try to experiment with other medicines and so on. When we go into other mat mat uh, matters which are not so inert and not so rule-bound, such as social things, economics, or arts, or the dreaded stuff of the mind. How do you know if somebody has pain or not? Because simply saying uh, something is paining in his body, you cannot see it, you cannot measure it. You cannot trust it. How do you find that out? How do you know if your leaders are lying? How do you know if something that is printed in a book or newspaper is right, correct, true? Here we are in the muddy territory of society, social sciences, psychology, mental sciences. Here, probably nobody has a good set of criteria to classify your experiences into true and false. This is our current situation. We do not really know how to ascertain the truth of these phenomena. And these are also very important for survival. And these are also a very big part of our lives. Usually they are more 
important than how an atom behaves or how this far away galaxy behaves <laughs> we are not concerned about these things so much and what do you want to know is what does my partner feel about me we want to know the mental state the truth of the statement or if somebody is selling me some stuff i want to know whether it is really good or not i want to find out the truth of it so what criteria to use here nobody has the clue and yes they use some thumb rules like if somebody said truth for like nine times then it is more probable that he will say something which is true for the 10th time this is what we call as faith blind faith because we do not know what is true and what is false we just assume things to be true many people are living their lives like this most of the things they simply assume as true using some arbitrary criteria so we can refine our definition of truth to include whatever we saw right now that the criteria are decided based on our need of certainty they are decided by the one who wants to know what is true and the decision is totally arbitrary so truth is a classification of statements which is based on some criteria which are subjective and arbitrary this is shocking this is shocking for those who never ventured into this kind of introspection on truth who never tried to find out the nature of truth oh this is true this is false this is not true this is not false and that's all was needed for them to act on that information look this book is saying it's true it is 2000 year old book can it be wrong look this big authority who is dressed in such and such clothes and 20 cars are following him and there are security guards around him and he owns a lot of money he has a big army he is telling you that this is true and so why do you even think that it is not true <laughs> this is how people live their lives even if you arrive at some truth it will be a subjective thing it will be based on arbitrary criteria and no two people are going to agree on those criteria it totally depends on me if i accept your criteria of truth or not don't you see this around you isn't this your own experience nobody really knows knows what is true nobody is really acting from truth and nobody really worries about truth what they worry about is survival that is more important than truth do you think man is a rational animal <laughs> do you think humans use logic and truth when they act when they say things where does that put a truth seeker a seeker of truth a seeker of knowledge is anything that you know as true really true if it is true by what criteria is it true ask yourself if it is true according to you what criteria were used to make that decision if something is false again what criteria were used to call it so if you acted on truth you should know if you do not know the criteria then it is hopeless 
then it does not matter whether whether you know the truth or not you are simply acting knowing well that the criteria are going to be subjective they will be set up by you yourself or somebody else can you trust it can you be certain of, about it when i say subjective it means they're not reliable if two people agree on the criteria then it is commonly said that it is true that when many people agree on the criteria we call it a valid method of knowledge let us say scientific method if the criteria are selected depending on the need or the precision of the truth then they are arbitrary what does arbitrary mean somebody just sat there and decided that i am going to <laughs> select these criteria that's all it means does it serve your purpose if it is arbitrary does that mean that the truth is true if it is arbitrary and subjective will it mean what does it mean that this thing is true which is based on this subjective and arbitrary criteria is it really true <laughs> where is your truth now oh no it is very scientific you see this such and such big authority big scientist has said that wait for 25 years something new is discovered and that old thing which you were so certain of is trashed because this new theory new observation new experiment totally throws the old truth away is science a pursuit of truth did they tell you that in their your schools <laughs> no it is a method it is a very brilliant genius method to know something but it does not give you the truth it gives you a working theory theory means assumptions science does not deal with truth nothing really deals with truth no philosophy deals with truth they are all working models they explain things they try to answer these five kind of questions what where why how who when so on if your science book says that such and such thing is true it is not any different than a book written by a religious person a book that asks you to believe blindly because every few years the science changes is it true if it changes <laughs> i told you there is very intelligent criteria for truth in science scientific method and many common sensical methods that uh, if it changes if it is true today it is not true tomorrow it's not really true this is not true <laughs> for soft sciences for example economics the value of dollar is this much today and tomorrow if you want to find out it will be something else and so it is not really true there is no true value of dollar there is no true value of rupees and there is no certain value of any shares your whole bank and their business is not really based on truth <laughs> do you believe them because they are so truthful do you think they are following the laws that that are true they are written in stone no they change the laws whenever there is a need the powerful people they are above law they are above truth they are above false they make the truth whenever it is needed they make it false whenever they want it this is how you are being ruled 
Many people do not know what is true and what is false and how to manipulate the truths, truths and falsities simply by choosing a suitable criteria and ever-changing criteria. And they are easy to manipulate. Believe me or not. <laughs> Anyhow, we do not worry. This is normal human business. A seeker is more worried about what he knows for certain. Can you find something which you know for certain? The question is very easy, you see. The answer is also very easy. And any seeker who is worth his salt knows the answer. The ancient philosopher, the wise men, they saw this miserable situation of the truth. So they tried to arrive at a criterion which is kind of a king of all the criteria. What is that criteria? Even the wisest of philosophers, they do not agree on, <laughs> on what is true, isn't it? This is your experience. It, in the end, it boils down to whom you trust. Boils down to blind faith. Is spirituality about blind faith? Are you fooling yourself that this is, this is true and therefore I know it is true. It was said by this and this big guru that it is true. Are you fooling yourself in the name of spirituality, in the name of science and truth and philosophies? This is the most important question any seeker needs to ask. Please do not ask what is true, what is false. You know, <laughs> it is not going to produce any results. Nothing meaningful will come out of it. Or you will get is a jungle of criteria, arbitrary subjective criteria, which will try to convince you, look, this is true, this is false. And who knows, something is true, probably it will be useful. Who knows? It gives you the expected results, then who cares if it is true or not? You need to do that. Do not assume that my actions are producing a good result, a desirable result, so I must be following the truth. The lie also works. When you tell a child that don't break your toy, don't uh, um, you know, hit your brother or sister, otherwise a tiger will eat you. <laughs> the child stops doing, causing the trouble. Works. The lies are useful. When you tell that something in the sky will punish you when you are dead, <laughs> and it, it works, it controls the masses, it forces them into an ethical behavior. It is not truly ethical, but you see, you can keep them under control. Oh no, no, you need to pay this much tax, because this tax money is going into nation building. <laughs> We know where the money is going, but it keeps the money flowing from your pocket to those, to the accounts of those who are ruling you, who are manipulating you. The lie works beautifully. When you want a beautiful woman, what do you say? I love you. Actually, you are convinced that you, you are in love. All you want is pleasure. If the woman says no, not able to provide the pleasure, love is gone instantly. No love, it turns into hate. Was it true? <laughs> there is no surprise that most part of our lives is covered up in lies. 
we are living a false life. Everything about this human life is false. So the wise men, they tried to, um, they saw this pitiable condition and they tried to find what is really true, what is not. And it is a big surprise. It is bigger surprise than in this whole drama of truth. Wherever they looked, they found falsity. They found lies. I am not talking about the social conditions. I am not talking about the nature of humans and <laughs> whatever they do for survival and procreation. I am not talking about that. They saw that the most fundamental things that we observe, we trust, they are all lies. They call it an illusion. Why is that? Because all that you can know is your experience. And you will try to arrive at truth by classifying your experience. And you will, by necessity, need criteria. And by necessity, again, the criteria will be subjective and arbitrary. So, <laughs> there is no way to arrive at truth using your experience. Whatever you experience will be subject to this process. It is very logical. But in the end, you don't get truth. No experience is going to take you to truth. It will take you to this jungle of subjective, arbitrary statements. I am not saying they won't be useful. They may be useful sometimes. But a spiritual person is not really after use. He has transcended the survival. We use whatever is, use, is useful in survival and then don't worry about it. Okay. But I want to know the ultimate truth. I want to know the reality. Where are you going to find the reality? Try the experience. Try any kind of experience. So-called spiritual experiences also. How are you going to classify them as true and false? Using some random, arbitrary, subjective criteria. If many people agree on it, well, it satisfies you. But if you are a very hardcore seeker, don't worry about what others are saying. And then it becomes impossible to know the truth by experience. So the wise people called everything that we can experience as illusion, as maya. Because that is what it is. It is not true. What do you really experience? Look at your experience. Sometimes I say your experience is your truth. Yes. That is, that is true. <laughs> but that which you are experiencing is not true. The conclusion that you draw from what you are experiencing is true. So take a look at, for example, a leaf. Initially, there is no leaf on the tree. It appears, it's kind of magic that it appears on the tree, on a branch. It grows a little bit and then dries up and falls down and then disappears in the dirt. It is as if it was never there. If nobody observed this process, then the leaf never happened. It is a transient phenomena. It is ever-changing, continuously morphing phenomena. Is there a leaf? This is the question. What is the truth of leaf on the tree? Before you saw the leaf, it was not there. After it dried up and became dirt, it, was, it is not there. So if you call something true, it has to be true in the past, it must be true today, it must be true in future, but 
amazingly this criteria this very logical attitude tells you that the leaf is not true it was not there while changing also it was kind of transitory the yesterday's leaf leaf was gone today's leaf is totally different it is not the same leaf and now it is dirt and probably recycled back into some other plants no more a leaf so by that criteria it is not true we say the leaf is an illusion it appeared for a while oh no but i saw it oh, but where is it now it's in my memory isn't that you know another criteria on the on top of other criteria is that if it is in my memory it has to be true we all know what kind of memory we have our memory is not really reliable anyhow if memory is your criteria then probably 90% of your life is already false because you don't remember <laughs> don't remember anything you remember only handful of things which were very important for your survival isn't this true so that which changes not true think about it do not simply blindly believe it does not matter how wise that philosopher is how big that name is how godly that guru is he can be wrong you need to question it you need to introspect on it you need to find the flaws in your thinking then you will find that nothing is really true you like your car very much and you, you drive it you are an expert driver and so on it is a status symbol for you probably that's why you like it <laughs> otherwise otherwise who cares for a piece of metal is there a car now let us find out this is the important thing is there a car and you will say yes i can see it many people can see it they all call it a car and yes it is a car it does not matter what language you use to describe it it is it is going to be the same thing look at the car again is there a car or are there wheels engines mechanisms seats steering wheel wheel windscreen your cd your radio your gps are there these things or is there a car tell me honestly it does not take a lot of intelligence also are you shocked because yes there is no car the car name is a name only and it represents an experience and that experience does not consist of a thing called car it is it consists of all these things tiny parts are there parts or is there an entity there solid individual entity no <laughs> it took you 2 seconds to know that you don't own a car what kind of delusions you are living in even those parts that the car is made up of they are made up of something else all kinds of elements and chemicals they are forms even if i replace a lot of them the car is going to remain the car is the that the same car no first it was not a car now it is not the same car what are you really driving although it is very useful to simply assume that there is a car there it's not there really it was not there and it will not be there it does not matter how much money you spend on it this might surprise you this can be new thing for you because i don't think people sit down and think like this they do not question their reality they don't do not question the truths that they already know 
because I already know why should I worry about you know why should I find out why should I waste my time on this useless exercise to know the truth who cares it does not matter how what you know how you know which criteria you use it is not true then you are going to ask me oh then is it false no it is not false you see the true and false both are arbitrary it is what it is it is your experience and therefore i say your experience is the truth the experience which is free from all this conditioning all that comes and goes is an illusion all that you name they are concepts therefore we say that whatever we experience is just names and forms and they are not true for the first time in your life you know why they are not true are the false without truth the false cannot exist this is a duality you need something to be true in order for the other things to be false that is not the case everything is false nothing is true and so there is no meaning in this classification apart from the practical use apart from purely survival related uses what is trying to survive here this body and again is there a body it was not there it won't be there it is changing right now also and it is not a thing it is collection of many many things which are also not things ultimately it is nothing <laughs> it is made up of nothing any physicist even your elementary school teacher will tell you that these things that we that our senses are sensing they are nothingness they are only forms that reminds me of these toys that you must have played with they are called pin screen and it is like a grid of pins and you can create any form you want out of it and then you can reset it it goes back to nothing what we see around us is a pin screen the forms appear and they disappear just like they appear and disappear on the pin screen it is arising and falling it is made up of nothing it is kind of very big puzzle my whole life was false my whole world crumbled down in few minutes and the solid ground of truth and certainty this random guy on youtube he pulled it out below my feet now i'm just hanging in air what is true then just like i said don't worry <laughs> there is there is no such thing stop looking for truth don't search for truth instead go for the experience you are experiencing something isn't that amazing why do you want to classify it as true and false it is all false or you can arbitrarily say that oh yes this these things are true yes it is true who cares yes there is a certain thing here which is obviously not true and false and that is you i am the truth not what i say is truth no 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 that is stupidity the i am is the truth because even if it is true even if it is false there has to be a witness of these things even if it is an illusion even if it is maya even if it is names and forms just spin screen there needs to be a witness to witness it can there be something which is true without the witness can there be something 
which is false without the witness. The most certain thing that I can say is that I exist. Now, in what form do I exist? How do I look like? These are not <laughs> these things are not going to produce anything meaningful. You don't need to believe me and try. A seeker always experiments. Don't believe anybody blindly. Don't believe me. I can only show you your mistakes. I cannot tell you the truth. I don't know the truth. If somebody comes to me declaring, look, I found the truth, this is the truth. I laugh loudly. <laughs> the stupidity to call something is true and false. This is the truth of the truth. There is a witness consciousness. Witnessing all that is true, all that is false. Can you call it true? No, because you will never find it. What criteria are you going to use to classify it as true? Because it is also that which it is witnessing, you see. The sculpture made up of pins on the pin screen is nothing but the pins. The clay pots made up out of clay are nothing but clay. The waves in the ocean are nothing but water. And the ornaments made up of gold are nothing but gold. Similarly, whatever you see, whatever you perceive, whatever you think, whatever you experience, whether it is true or false, it is the same thing which is witnessing it. There is no difference between what is witnessing and what is being witnessed. It is pure emptiness. It is nothingness. It is nothing. Can nothing be true? Can nothing be false? Nothing is true and false at the same time. It is there in relation to something. That is why we call it consciousness. That means we know because there is something to know. These two things do not exist independently of each other. They do not exist. Therefore, we say not to. Non-dual. Advait. Very interesting because there is a criteria in Advait that gives you the true and false. It is very simple and it, it is actually the most powerful, the strongest criteria that I ever saw in my life. And the criteria is very simple. It says that which changes is false. That which does not change is true. Now as a homework, you can try to find something that does not change and you will find the truth. Good luck because <laughs> when you take your experience, all of your experience is changing. The experience is nothing but change. We also call it mind because it's all mind created. You see, just like I gave you the examples, the leaf, the car, the pin screen, the ornaments, the waves, do they exist? No, they're mind created. Something exists, you will say, yes, mind is creating them out of something. And it is that emptiness. You will never find that something, you will only find the emptiness. You will find nothing. It, they, these things are being created out of nothing. You will, you will not find the truth in any kind of experience. Some people may want to say, oh, the experience is the truth then now because it does not change. This is true to some extent. Many seekers are satisfied with this kind of conclusion that yes, 
I am the experiencer and I am the truth. I am the only truth. A few put a question mark on it and they cannot find the experiencer. <laughs> they, do, they do not find this thing called I. What is I? Is this this body? Are there, uh, there are some concepts in my mind which I call as I. There are some memories. There is a name. There is a form. There are characteristics. They are ever changing. Is that me? And if that is me, then it is already false. You will never find that which does not change. It because it is nothing. And can you call nothing the emptiness, the attribute less and changing, invisible thing which is not a thing as truth? How meaningful is that? All you can do is, on this spiritual path, any spiritual path, destroy your beliefs of true and false and remain as you are. You are both true. You are both false. You are true and false. And you are not true. And you are not false. Isn't that amazing? Why do we need random truths and false falsities to define anything. Just experience this game. It is amazing. What are you seeking? Thank you very much for listening. Asitoma.